In the middle of a frozen field, a bleeding man runs toward the lake to have some water, only to fall into it and drown. At that moment in the city, Anna wakes up from a nightmare, but her partner Sergei quickly comforts her. Later, Sergei takes his son Anton to the park, but when his ex-wife Ira comes to pick him up, he complains that Sergei is putting Anton in dangerous games. Ira is mad that Sergei got married again and always makes Sergei's life difficult, not letting him see Anton much. Nearby, a man falls sick to the ground and most people rush to help him while Ira drags Anton away. Meanwhile at a detox clinic, Polina is flooding the bathroom and setting it on fire while her rich dad Leonia pays for all the expenses. While they're driving away, they almost run over an old lady, who looks sick in an uncommon way. Leonia makes a stop to talk to his neighbor Sergei, who is flying a drone with Anna's son Misha. While the men discuss dinner plans, Misha watches Polina and develops a crush. In the evening, the families have dinner together. When asked, Anna and Sergei share the story of how they met, she was a therapist recommended to him after several sleepless nights. Polina starts stroking Misha's leg to mess with him causing him to leave the table. Bored, Polina turns on her dad and his girlfriend Marina, pointing out that their story is like Sergei and Anna's except Marina was a dirty dancer instead of a therapist. An angry Leonia immediately makes her leave. Afterward Leonia asks about Misha's homeschooling, and it's revealed he has Asperger's syndrome. Right now Misha is outside flying his drone and when Polina notices the camera, she offers a naughty show for him, causing him to crash the drone. At the table, Leonia keeps making rude comments about Misha's condition and Anna snaps at him to shut him up. After dinner is over, Anna and Sergei watch the news and learn about a rapidly spreading virus with unusual symptoms. A scientist tries to raise the alarm but he's quickly cut off with an ad. The next day, everyone in Ira's workplace wearing a mask. When she goes to the bathroom, she hears a woman cough and when she opens the stall, she finds the woman dead. This causes Ira to leave work and go pick up Anton, but when she arrives at the school she isn't allowed to go in because the military has isolated the building. The kids are all being kept in the gym and since they don't know what's happening, they're having fun. Some soldiers suddenly enter and announce the place is now under quarantine while other men go into a classroom, where an infected student is hiding in the corner. The soldiers shoot some kind of white liquid at her then they take her away, and people outside including the father begin panicking and demanding answers. Ira calls Anton and learns he sneaked away to hide in the locker room. Meanwhile in Moscow, the infection has really taken off, so the highway has been closed. Sergei calls Ira to tell him he's stuck on the blocked road, but she takes it as him being useless and hangs up. Then she moves around the building, where Anton has left the lockers and approached the window. Ira breaks the window with a rock to get her son out. At his house, Leonia is telling Marina to pack so they can get away, but Polina informs him that airports just got closed too. Then Polina sends Misha a video from an influencer who offers some details of the infection, which is apparently spreading through handshakes and sneezes. If someone catches it, they cough up blood, their eyes go white, and they die. People in Moscow are rioting, and the military is spreading some time of medicine in the form of a weird white paint. Polina tries to flirt with Misha, but suddenly the internet goes out. In the middle of the night, Sergei hears a noise and carefully goes downstairs ready to fight, but it's just his father Boris. In the 70s, Boris worked as a mathematician in an important institute and ran many hypothetical scenarios, so he's sure that the people in Moscow will soon escape and spread the virus everywhere. Sergei isn't happy to see his father but after hearing his data, he agrees for the family to leave in the morning. Afterward Sergei promises Anna he'll always stay with her, however he leaves the room after she falls asleep. He tells his father to leave with the family if he isn't back in the morning, leaving a note for Anna saying he must go after Anton. At the blockade, he manages to get into the city by bribing a food delivery driver to hide in the truck. Meanwhile at Ida's, she opens the door to her mother, only to discover she's infected as well. Ida immediately closes the door and plays some music so she can't avoid hearing her mother's dying pleas. When Sergei arrives, they have a heartful reunion and the family leaves together. They discover the truck driver is dead and quickly get inside the vehicle to escape an incoming mob. When they make it to the barricade, Sergei presents the dead driver's permission, but the soldiers see Ira trying to hide. Sergei just speeds up and crosses the barricade by force, ignoring the open fire. Back to Anna, she and the family watch how Leonia allows some members of the military into his home. Suddenly soldier Vitya knocks Leonia out, and while his companions move to Anna's place, Vitya tries to take advantage of Marina. After he tears off her clothes, Polina surprises him from behind, stabbing him with scissors. Vitya isn't dead yet and attacks Polina, but in the struggle she pushes him back and the scissors finish killing him. Meanwhile Boris shoots at the soldiers approaching the house, and Misha rushes to check on Polina. The last standing soldier surrenders and takes his men away, so Boris and Anna join Leonia's family to leave together. At that moment, Sergei arrives as well, and they prepare to leave while the military is coming back for revenge. In the middle of the road, the soldiers find a couple running away and immediately shoot them down. Back to the families, they're approached by a man whose wife is pregnant and needs assistance. Anna wants to help, but Ira says they can't know if they are sick and fires a few warning shots to make them leave. 
Once everyone has packed enough things, they split the group into three cars and get away right before the soldiers arrive at their houses and find Vitya's body. Vitya's brother Sonia grabs a tablet and finds pictures that give them a clue of whom to look for. Moments later, Anna's car starts smoking and breaks down. Sergei doesn't have a tow line, and Leonia does but he lies and says he doesn't because he notices Boris cough. Leonia offers to go back to retrieve it and takes Marina and Polina with him, but as soon as they drive away, he confirms to his family that they aren't coming back. Sometime later, Marina has to pee and takes Leonia with her. Suddenly Polina sees some vehicles approaching and quickly rushes to warn her family, so the trio hides right before the military arrives. Using the tablet pictures, the soldiers confirm this is the car they want and start following footprints, so the family begins running away through the woods. Eventually the soldiers lose track of them, and when Sonya refuses to go back, one of the men calls him out for his obsession. Sonya gets violent against his own squadron, causing another soldier to shoot him to stop him. The body dangles right in front of where the family is hiding and they have to stand the blood not to give away their position. Then the soldier also shoots the man Sonya attacks so they can cover up what happened when they return to base. Meanwhile Ira tells Sergei about her mother, which is heard by Anna and Boris over the radio. Anna also has to hear Sergei promise Ira he'll always be there for her. Suddenly Leonia calls them saying he has the tow line but that he's stuck, so Sergei tries to go pick him up alone but the others insist on coming too. While Boris stays with the broken car, the rest leave together in the other vehicle and find Leonia's family, who explain they were victims of the military. However the others notice this isn't the right road and discover Leonia had been trying to escape. Ira doesn't think they should help them, so Leonia proposes Sergei drop them at a nearby gas station, and the compromise is accepted. When they make it to the gas station, nobody there wants to help Leonia's group. Misha and Anna insist that everyone can fit in the car, but when Sergei gets out to retrieve them, a man in the crowd coughs and everyone thinks he's infected. Another man stabs the guy and everyone panics, immediately driving away. Leonia's family is abandoned in the station and the only car left belongs to the dead guy, so they can't use it because the virus may be inside. Moments later, Sergei reunites with Boris, who has fixed the other car and calls his son out for abandoning his friends. At the station, Leonia sees the attendant and pays him to let them inside, discovering the man has been hiding lots of supplies there. However the attendant soon begins behaving inappropriately towards Polina, and when Leonia stands up to him, the guy pulls out a shotgun and throws them out. At that moment, Sergei's group arrives to pick them up. He mentions they need to replace the fuel and Leonia has an idea for revenge. They pretend they want to buy the fuel legally but when the attendant opens the window, they attack him and push him inside to knock him out and raid the station. Meanwhile Misha examines the corpse of the dead guy and determines that he wasn't actually infected at all, people had just been paranoid, which means his car is now available. The three vehicles leave together and Boris says they should go to an island in the middle of a lake where an abandoned ship has washed ashore. He has been going there for years and has made it livable. Suddenly they hear a man coughing over the radio, he says his name is Igor and he's infected, so he asks the families to pray for him. Misha and Boris grant his wish. When it gets dark and the snow keeps getting worse, the group decides to put up a tent to spend the night. Polina approaches Misha when he's relieving himself and tells him that if he gets her alcohol, she'll do the naughty with him. The next morning, they keep going and find a mess on the road, a military blockade was attacked and now there are bodies and crashed vehicles everywhere. Before proceeding, the group comes out to check it's safe and Sergei takes a body out of a truck to move it and clear the road. Then Sergei notices a body still moving in the back and ends up getting stabbed by a wounded soldier. The group panics and drags Sergei into a car to drive away. Eventually they find an abandoned house and they break into it to find supplies, but they also find a man outside. This turns out to be Igor, who lives next door and promises to stay away. Using vodka, needle, and thread, Sergei gets patched up. Afterward Misha asks Boris why he and Sergei don't get along so he can distract him and steal the vodka, but Misha only says he wasn't a good father before pouring the little vodka left on the snow. While Sergei sleeps, Anna and Ira have a talk in the car. Ira explains how her relationship with Sergei broke down only because she didn't put out for a while after Anton's birth, and when Anna says she should've, Ira leaves in a huff. At that moment Igor shows up and asks for food, so Anna shares some to get him to leave. Later in the evening, Misha brings Polina an alcoholic sorbet, which is just a bowl of the snow that Boris poured his vodka on with some sugar. Polina likes it and when she learns Misha never drank alcohol, she puts some sorbet on her skin and makes him lick it, but Misha only ends up coughing it all out. Suddenly Polina sees someone spying on them but the figure quickly disappears. Meanwhile Sergei wakes up and tells Boris to leave with the group, but Boris refuses to abandon his son. After everyone falls asleep, Leonia once again escapes in the middle of the night. Anna wakes up when she hears Sergei mumbling in his sleep, only to keep hearing him say Ira's name. Polina is struggling with the fact she killed a man and has nightmares of Vitya telling her not to mess with Misha because he doesn't deserve it. Suddenly everyone wakes up when they hear shots outside and they run to hide behind the furniture, only to discover it's a drunk Boris having a panic attack. Thankfully the group manages to tackle him before he hurts anyone and they tie him up. An hour later, 
Everyone is shocked to see Leonia come back. He's brought a vet with him, who gives Sergei some medicine. The next morning, Boris doesn't remember what he did and he's freed, Sergei also starts feeling better. Afterward, the women go into the bathhouse together. While Misha is gathering more wood to warm them up, Igor appears from behind and knocks him out before stealing all the group's supplies. When the group discovers this, they storm into Igor's house and are shocked to find his infected family feasting on the bloodstained floor. A sick woman tries to attack the group so they shoot her before she can come close. Meanwhile in a city nearby, Pavel and Kolya come to the hospital to look for medicine. The building isn't in good condition and bodies are everywhere, including thrown through the windows. The duo looks for the doctor that promised to help over the phone, only to find him dead too, so instead they take a tunnel to search for the storage room. There, they're attacked by a mysterious person who breaks Pavel's glasses, but thankfully the person soon runs away and the duo can keep going. Eventually they find the storage room and after grabbing a bunch of medicine, they leave. While they're driving away, suddenly Anton appears on the road and Kolya almost runs him over, but stops the truck just in time. Ira and Boris soon show up to pick the kid up and when they learn that Pavel is a doctor, they bring him to check on Sergei. After Pavel shares some medicine and tells Sergei not to move much, Ira gives the doctor some contact lenses. Pavel calls her beautiful and asks for a photo of her to remember her by. After Pavel and Kolya leave, the families keep on driving in the three cars. Boris and Ira are sharing vitamins but Ira doesn't let Anton have any, and when he tries to take some, she pushes him away, making him cry. Moments later, they have to stop the cars because they discover the bridge is destroyed, so they have no choice but to turn back. In the evening, the snow gets worse and makes it hard to drive. Pavel and Kolya see a sign at a karaoke cafe and stop there for the night. Inside, they meet Natalie and Kolya is happy to dance and sing with her. Afterward they share some food and drinks while Pavel explains he promised his son that he would bring him medicine, so he's eager to leave soon. Back to the families, Ida's car is stuck in a ditch, so they have to tie it to the truck to get it out. However this causes the truck to get off the road and crash. The group tries to push it out together to no avail, and since the weather is getting too cold, they agree to wait in their cars until morning. Sergei learns about Anton being grounded over the vitamins and calls Ira out for it, saying she's taking it out on the kid just to get to him. Eventually, Boris sees some vehicles approaching and everyone gets ready to defend themselves, but it's just a mute guy with a tow truck, who helps them get out of the ditch. Then he takes them to a shelter so they can spend the night there. While the adults sleep, Polina and Misha sneak out to get frisky on the bus in the garage. However Polina gets distracted when she has a vision of Vidya and Misha finishes right there, putting Polina in a bad mood over the risk of pregnancy. In the karaoke bar, Kolya and Natalie spend the night together. In the morning, the men need to leave, but Kolya promises Natalie he'll be back after dropping Pavel at the hospital. At the shelter, Anna discovers that the men are stealing gas from the mute man, and when she calls them out on it, Leonia reminds her she shot Igor's sick wife so she's the same as them. At that moment, the mute man catches them red-handed and spits on the ground to show his opinion of them. At a bridge nearby, Pavel and Kolya are ambushed by some locals, who raid their ambulance and start stealing their medicine. Soon things get violent and the duo is beaten up by the crowd. At that moment the families arrive and Ira immediately comes out to scare the crowd off with gunfire. Then she drags Pavel into the car, but sadly Kolya is already dead. While everyone is distracted, Anton takes the chance to run into the woods. The cars leave without noticing he's gone, and Anton calls for his mother in the middle of an empty road. Moments later, the group sees the military taking many people away in buses to be quarantined. The soldiers notice them too but don't react, knowing that they'll be stopped at the checkpoint ahead. At that moment, Boris finally notices that Anton is gone. The cars stop and an argument ensues, causing Ira and Anna to get in a fight. After the men separate them, Misha points out they need to hurry before the soldiers come back. Meanwhile Anton makes it to a small town that has been taken by the military and sees soldiers shooting at infected people. Terrified, he begins running away, and a soldier follows him. Anton tries to hide inside the hospital, but the soldier finds him and aims his weapon at him. They find Anton's footprints and follow them into the forest. Pavel points out there's a hospital in a town nearby so they head there, finding the whole place deserted and a pool of blood in a hospital room. Outside there's a pile of bodies and a desperate Ira begins to search them, unbothered by the infection. Suddenly she breaks down and asks everyone to leave her, but Pavel slaps her and convinces her to come with them since Anton is obviously not there. At that moment, a helicopter flies overhead and drops a bunch of pamphlets warning that the district is being evacuated. Next, the group goes to the bus station, where people are being evacuated. As soon as Ira spots a kid, she runs toward the crowd and enters a bus, only to learn the child is an Anton. Sergei comes to drag her away, but the soldiers don't let them leave since they've been exposed to the virus now. Boris tries to intervene, but more soldiers surround them. The group doesn't know what to do so Marina takes a weapon and holds it at Leonia, insisting she's in charge now. In the meantime, it's shown what happened six hours ago. Before the soldier can attack Anton, he falls to the ground because Olya attacks him, and she takes the child away with her. 
they sneak around to avoid the military, but as they run, Anton trips and hurts his ankle, so now he can't walk and Olya must drag him around on his coat. Eventually they make it to Olya's house where a bunch of refugees are living and Anton's ankle gets better. At that moment, the military arrives to empty the remaining houses, so Olya's group runs to hide in the cellar. The soldiers find a sleeping drunk under the covers and kill him on the spot before leaving. Afterward, the group takes the body to a shed outside and promises to come back to bury him in three days. Then they go check the other houses and end up befriending a veteran who has a whole collection of firearms and accepts to share them with them. The man puts them through shooting practice, and once everyone is ready, they leave to fight back, but first Olya leaves Anton with a bunch of kids and teens. Olya's group arrives at the bus station at the same time Sergei and the others are getting in trouble. Sergei pushes a soldier away and causes him to shoot his gun in the air, triggering chaos and confusion. Shots are fired all over the place and many people die, but eventually the civilians win. Since Olya heard the family asking about Anton, she offers to take them to her home. However back in the house, Anton is being kicked out at the end of a pitchfork because the others blame him for spreading the virus since he's from Moscow. By the time Ira arrives, she panics and runs into the forest yelling until she finally finds her son. Afterward, Olya takes Anton and her parents to reunite with the rest of the group, but at that moment, Anna starts coughing up blood. Meanwhile in a house nearby, a military man is covering his dead family with gas in the studio. However before he can start the fire, he coughs up and dies. Back to the group, after a short argument it's decided that Anna will ride alone, then the others divide the group between those who had contact with her and those who didn't. Anna thinks back to a year and a half ago when she met Sergei. He went to her to have couples therapy with Ira, but she never showed up and Sergei ended up talking to Anna alone. In the present, Anna is struggling to stay conscious and warns the others through the radio, so they all pull over. They see some lights in the distance and decide to spend the night in that house. Anna is left alone in a room and begins thinking about the day she started her affair with Sergei. While he was in the shower, she put the empty protection wrapper in Sergei's pocket so Ira would find it. Meanwhile Pavel searches the place for medication and reveals to Sergei that he's potentially immune to the virus because he's been exposed multiple times at work. Suddenly Marina begins screaming because she's found the bodies in the study. While Pavel looks over the bodies, Misha finds a gun and hides it under the soldier's mask. After noticing the bodies are infected, Pavel locks the door and tells everyone to stay away from it. Afterward, Sergei notices Boris is drinking a lot, and it makes him think of the time his father tried to teach him how to shoot. Boris had been drunk then too and accidentally shot Sergei in the leg. The next morning, Anna tells Ira she doesn't have much time left and begs her not to abandon Misha when she dies, which he unfortunately overhears. Afterward, Leonia wants to divide the house into different areas for different people, but Sergei is in denial about Anna's condition and points out the whole house was probably affected by the previous family, throwing a glass in protest. Then Leonia checks on Marina, who wants to leave as soon as possible to protect her baby. While hiding in the bathroom, she remembers the night she discovered she was pregnant. After seeing the positive test, she went to a bar to drink and met Leonia, and the two of them ended up getting frisky in his car. This means the baby isn't his. Meanwhile Polina shares with Misha what happened in her family. Her mother was hooked up to a ventilator and Leonia was arranging her funeral right there in the room. Polina tried to protest and Leonia explained that her mom was brain dead, so this would be an act of mercy. At that moment Leonia got a call from Marina and Polina yelled at him for cheating. In the present, Misha can't deal with this and leaves the room. Afterward, Polina checks on Anna and discovers she's fully infected, so she rushes out. In the meantime, Misha goes to the study to retrieve the soldier's gun and prepares to self it, but Polina stops him just in time. Misha delivers a self-loathing speech, pointing out his mother is dying and yet he still can't feel human emotions. Polina confesses she loves him, but he replies that he doesn't love her back. In the morning, Marina begs Leonia to leave and Polina agrees. Boris gives them directions to reach the lake and the family leaves while Sergei tells Ira she should leave with them. Back inside, Sergei confronts Boris about what happened when he was a kid, leaving Boris very upset. Then Sergei goes to check on Anna, but Pavel doesn't let him in, so Sergei gets very drunk. Moments later, Ira finds him passed out in the pool and saves him from drowning. The two of them kiss and end up doing the dirty. Meanwhile in the car, Marina discovers she's bleeding down there and Leonia panics, which accidentally causes them to get off the road and crash. Back in the house, Pavel gives Anna a transfusion of his own blood. Later when Misha comes to see her, he's happy to discover she's alive and healthy. Afterward the group has a meeting and Pavel confirms his immune blood healed Anna, but everyone should continue to take precautions. In private, Ira tells Sergei they should tell Anna what they did, but he refuses. At that moment they realize Boris hasn't come down and go looking for him, only to find him on the floor having a heart attack. Pavel is about to open his chest to massage the heart, but then Boris wakes up and sees Anna in perfect condition. Thinking God heard his prayers, he dies, and the family takes the body out wrapped in shower curtains. Then the group prepares to leave. Pavel wants to get to the nearest lab so that his blood can be used to create a remedy and Ira wants to drive him, which causes an argument between her and Sergei. 
To stop this, Pavel agrees to stick with them and tend to Anna's health while they teach him to drive. Once they settle, he can leave on his own. Later on the road, the cars have to stop when they run into Leonia's truck, which is wrecked and covered in blood. Misha wants to follow their footprints and look for them, but Anna tries to talk him out of it. Ignoring her, Misha leaves anyway so Sergei tries to restrain him, only for Misha to start having a seizure, wetting himself in the process. Luckily it's over soon. Meanwhile Leonia is dragging a bleeding Marina on a sheet and Polina keeps having visions of Vitya as they cross the forest. Eventually Leonia sees some smoke in the distance and comes closer to find a building with a woman. Leonia locks her in her own basement and brings her family inside. Marina is losing her mind and hides in the attic, where she sings lullabies while holding her bag as if it was her baby and Polina tries to keep her company. Back to Sergei's group, they finally make it to the lake. While an ashamed Misha stays in the van, the group climbs the ship and discovers the lock's broken. They come inside to investigate and find nobody, but there are signs of occupation, chunks of meat on the kitchen counter and warm coals in the fire. When they check the shed, they find a few legless bodies that have been used for meat. Minutes later, the mysterious occupant returns armed with a hatchet. Sergei hides and takes him by surprise, then he holds him at gunpoint to make him pick up his things and leave. As Sergei escorts the guy across the ice, the stranger explains how he was a normal guy that was only driven to cannibalism because of the extreme situation. However he's tired of living with the guilt and refuses to move, begging Sergei to end it. He reveals he has a hidden blade in his boot and tries to come closer, so Sergei has no choice but to shoot him. Afterward, the family buries Boris next to the lake. Then Pavel has his first driving lesson with Ira and they end up kissing. When they come back, Sergei notices how close they are and gets jealous but still gives them his blessing. Inside the ship, Misha is becoming increasingly unstable and yells at Anna. In the morning, the family notices a car has been stolen, so they agree to use a buddy system from then on even for the bathroom. Then they notice that Misha is missing and run outside, only to discover something big has fallen into through the ice, meaning Misha must have drowned. Meanwhile Leonia takes the bag from a sleeping Marina and burns it outside while crying, implying the real baby was dead inside. When Marina wakes up, she panics because she can't find her baby. The woman in the basement hears her and says the baby is down there, so Marina opens the door. In just a few seconds, the woman takes a weapon and locks the family in the basement. An argument ensues and Leonia says he did what he had to with his baby, causing Marina to confess the baby wasn't his and she only wanted a sugar daddy. Sometime later, Anna and Sergei discuss Misha's death. Anna seems unable to remember some things, indicating she's losing her mind. Suddenly Anna thinks she sees Misha's body in the water, but when Sergei smashes the ice, he pulls out the corpse of the guy he killed. Anna returns to the ship and continues to struggle with her amnesia to the point when she asks where Misha is, so Ira tries her best to comfort her. It's then revealed that Misha is alive and took the car to go looking for Polina, following the footprints and the blood like he originally wanted. In the meantime, the woman hears Leonia beg for water and shares some with them but doesn't let them go to the bathroom. Later, Leonia is chained up so he can do chores around the house. He tries to apologize by using Marina's stillbirth as justification, but the woman just tells him to keep working. When Leonia is sent back to the basement, the family is given moldy food and Marina is so out of her mind that Polina has to push her away. Upstairs, the woman is trying on wigs and makeup, then she brings Leonia up at gunpoint to handcuff him to the bed and take advantage of him. Nearby, Misha is getting closer to the house, but he accidentally steps into a bear trap. He shoots the trap to free himself, and the shot distracts the crazy woman, giving Leonia the chance to free his foot and kick the woman off the bed. As she tries to shoot him, Leonia gets off the bed too and lifts it to attack his captor. Afterward, Leonia frees his family before going outside to check on the shot he hurt, only to find Misha's unconscious body. Leonia brings him back inside and removes the bear trap while Misha and Polina kiss. Then Misha confesses he made it look like he died so his family wouldn't come after him. Marina is also starting to look more sane, so they decide to leave together, but Leonia makes sure to free the woman first. Back on the ship, Ira and Pavel have their first time, which is seen by Sergei. Suddenly the house is shaken by a huge explosion and a fire starts outside. The men go out to investigate, finding the wreckage of a foreign military plane. Sergei decides to go back and Pavel stays to relieve himself, but an infected Asian soldier finds him and holds him hostage. Using the translation app on Pavel's phone, the soldier asks the family to surrender, so Pavel takes out a scalpel from his pocket and stabs the man. Sergei takes the opportunity to shoot the soldier, and Pavel gets a wound in the process. The next morning, it's time for Pavel to leave the group. Ira begs him to stay and start a life with her, but Pavel leaves anyway. On the road, Leonia's group is having trouble with the car, but fortunately they're found by a priest that helps them. Marina asks about lighting a candle for her baby, but the priest says it can't be done because the child wasn't baptized. Leonia convinces the priest to marry him to Marina, so they go to the church for the ceremony. This inspires Polina to ask Misha if he'd marry her and Misha immediately asks the priest to marry them as well. On the ship, Ira takes out her frustrations on Anna while Anton and Sergei overhear. 
She confesses she's read Anna's diary and learned that she put the wrapper in Sergei's clothes because she wanted any man in her life that could help her look after Misha. As revenge, Ira tells Anna what happened in the pool with Sergei. Unable to remember any of what Ira said, Anna decides to burn her diary. At that moment, Leonia's group arrives at the lake and a warm reunion ensues. Suddenly they hear some explosions and discover the ship is on fire. It turns out the Asian military is nearby, ready to continue their cleansing. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.